Manager. Joining us now to talk about the financial risks that people face when they're looking at retirement is Jason Burnick, who is financial planning coach from uh, Axis. Jason, it's a subject we often talk about, but we have to because it's a big one and there are lots of aspects to it and people don't learn, do they? No, no so, they don't. So, I mean, let me just take at random uh, from, from the issues around retirement financial planning and uh, pensions and provident funds. I think there's still a mindset which comes from the days when uh, the government looked after you when uh, most pensions and provident funds were defined benefits so you just didn't think about it, you got your pension. But also things like medical aid. So if you worked uh, for a company, the medical aid of the company would look after you forever. Uh, that doesn't happen anymore and I think a lot of people just forget to allow for the couple of thousand rand or more that they might have to spend every month on medical aid. Yeah, I think that people still think that everything will be all right. And defined Do you benefit, find that they do? Is that a still a prevailing they, they attitude? They do. They have this hope that, that if they just work hard, it'll all kind of work out in the mm. end. Defined benefit is still around, but it's not common. Defined contribution replaced it a long time ago. Mm. And the difference is that the responsibility is now in the hands of the person. And the planning for that retirement needs to start at the outset. It has to start very early. And you get your youngsters that go into the workplace. And thinking about retirement is just not part of their life at that point. It's like you're not going to die. Absolutely, <laughs> it's too far away. So, yep. so I'll get to it eventually when it becomes relevant. I'll think about it when the time comes. Right. It, it's, a, it's a long, long, it's my parents that have to think mm. about it mm. now. But if you think about the span of retirement, it could be equal to the span that you worked. You could have a 40 year career and then you retire, assuming that you retire in the traditional sense where you stop working and then you go into retirement. And that retirement phase could be another 40 years. And the thing is that one needs to save to live for that similar period that you work for. And that's a massive amount yeah, of money. Yeah, whereas the old model, I think, is saying I'll retire at 60 or 62 or 65 and I'll probably live for 5 or 6 or 10 years more. You don't want to think too much about that. Right, right. Actually, we're talking 25, 30 maybe, given new life expectancy. Definitely. And the, the life expectancy rates that are used in insurance com with insurance companies uh, are used as a benchmark in planning to some degree. But those more advanced planners will actually start planning to about 100. People are living a lot longer. So their money, in relative to their lifespan, is running out a lot earlier. So you're planning to one age, but your money's running out earlier, and that's a very, very scary thing. And the result of that is, is something that you may have heard of called the sandwich generation, where the kids move out and the parents move in. <laughs> right, so you've always got responsibilities. Right, so you know what parent wants to go live with their kids because they didn't plan properly. Yep. So we need some quick, sharp, guidelines here on how to do I mean as a rough guideline you know what kind of money should be being what percentage of your money should be being set aside the old traditional defined uh, I think benefit. the benefit and contribution where you you seven and a half percent of your salary goes uh, to the fund mm -hmm. and you pay and you pay seven and a half the company pays seven and a half I don't think that's enough I mean, surely it's not enough given the kinds of things you're talking about. No, uh, no and it's, it's not easy to go on a rule of thumb. There were rules of thumb, some thumbs that we used to work with. Uh, for example, the, the consumption that you would uh, contemplate in retirement. But the thing is that life changes, the world changes. Uh, we have political and economic considerations. And the plan needs to change as well. So if, if someone starts on a plan really early and considers a 40, 50 year span of savings, they need to review that plan often, at yeah. least annually. And as they, as they come upon speed bumps in the road or their goals, their own goals and their own objectives and dreams and aspirations change, their direction will change to follow that. And they need to review that and consider making changes to that plan all along the way. So if you take a rule of thumb of a percentage to be saved to pursue a certain capital amount that'll, uh, that'll be adequate for a number of years into retirement, it's not really like that anymore. I, I don't think we should stick to those rules of thumb as a certain percentage, but what is important is that the person that's planning for his or her future needs to sit down with a professional and understand what their goals are, where they are, where they, not need, where they want to be in the future, and plan toward that as best as possible. What about that medical aid area? I know a lot of right. people who've been caught out by that. They just didn't ever, they quite prudent in their general saving, didn't occur to them that first of all the state health system might not be adequate for them and secondly how much it's going to cost them as they get older to pay for medical aid. Yeah, so I don't think uh, the state health system is necessarily reliable for, for those that are thinking about medical aid early. 
The medical aid is expensive, the increases annually are quite high and medical costs are going up. In addition to medical aid and, and hospitalization and uh, planning for critical illness, for example, there's also a consideration of health and wellness into the future because it's not just about planning for the unforeseen, it's about being healthy in our retirement years mm. that are a lot longer now. Mm. So if we consider that medical aid as one of the most expensive uh, or, or one of the most significant parts of a retiree's budget, it may jump from what they're paying pre-retirement to post-retirement, and they need to plan for that as well. So it's not just the cost of a monthly premium to, to provide for the unforeseen, but everything in addition. Mm. I think what we need is one of the medical aid companies to be enterprising and come up with a way to reward people on, on the vitality principle for saving for future medical aid payments. Here's an idea that I've just copyrighted. I'll phone <laughs> Discovery and see if I can market it. Thanks to Jason Burnick, a financial planning coach from uh, Axis.